Okay, hello everyone. Firstly, thank you to the hosts of the WLPC conference for being able to put up such an engaging show. I've been impressed with the level of dynamism since I attended last time in Prague. And really today, what I would like to talk about is innovation cycles and how sometimes we are too early. And then, with some technology leap, we are able to move forward. So my job at the WBA is to create bridges between our global membership. We have vendors, operators, hubs, internet players. So it's a really interesting mix of companies that want to move the industry forward. So that's why, going back to 2003, more than 20 years ago, WBA was established with a single mission. Six carriers wanted their corporate employees and eventually their customers to be able to bring a laptop from an airport and connect to another airport where they would arrive. There was no solution. So then we had this username password, captive portals, some initial .1x implementations, you see some intercarrier rooming, some financial data clearing, but definitely the industry has evolved. We all know that, of course, Wi-Fi went mobile, suddenly explosion of devices, more mobility, security protocols keep getting act, and then SIM card authentication arrived. And with that, pass point. But what I would like you to focus on attention is maybe this chart down here. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I still have a job because one of my KPIs, I, hopefully I had many, was to try and get global pass point networks to get deployed. And over the course of maybe seven years, we got 80. 80 networks deployed, talking with everyone in the world. So definitely, big innovation has been around for a while, but we needed to take it to the next step. And that's when open roaming, that was the technology we were incubating in the WBA and eventually Cisco launched, we decided to standardize it as a neutral host technology. What happened is, suddenly we had broad device support, we had a framework to scale it massively, and new value propositions, such as delivering QoS. So I'm delighted to share that finally these numbers started to go up, and especially since last year, we are seeing a massive growth in terms of adoption. So this is definitely the momentum that we need to take things forward. There will be a presentation about the technical components of Passpoint Open Roaming. What I would like to say is, Open Roaming is not a product. It's a technical standard composed of three main dimensions. It's a cloud federation, a database for you to plug your networks into something that can be done on a community basis, is a cybersecurity service using PKI, TLS, and is also about network automation using ARCOIS, policies. We need policy on Wi-Fi. And yes, we need QoS. At the same time, open rooming was something we developed that needed to be ready the next day. So let's not wait for device cycles, right? We do something today, maybe iOS, Android will adopt it in 40 years, no. Everything inside open rooming was ready since day one. That's why you see many references to IEEE, IETF, Wi-Fi Alliance standards. I leave you with this link, it's an internet draft that is posted on IETF. If you are in a good mood, I can discuss with you some state diagrams later on, maybe after Bob's wine tasting and physics session, that's probably a good one to get things started. Um, but yeah, so for you guys, you came here, right? You deploy networks. You want to make things work. What really open roaming means? So one angle is we as an industry, we need to improve the perception people have on Wi-Fi. So outside this room, our families, our you know, friends, when they look to the phone, big shopping mall in the world, Millennia Walk. I'm going through the shopping mall on our last, last, latest event, and the phone prompts me, click to connect. I tap it, and it's saying, sign into a non-secured network. So this is the message we are passing. Then, even if you connect with some nice portal, some PSK, the phone will still tell you not secured. Are you going to use your banking account? Are you going to use maybe some corporate sensitive information in the network, even though it's Wi-Fi 7, even though it has all the latest and greatest features? Maybe no. So if you do open roaming pass points, operating system vendors are telling users yes. This is a good experience. Not only that, but personal efficiency. So my journey here 
I spent between Amsterdam, you know, stopover in Seattle, I counted around 50 minutes doing onboarding. Three airplanes, two airports, I want these 15 minutes back, and I think we can get them. But then, one thing is industry perception, the other is you guys. So you have priorities, right? So this is nice, we have a network here, you want to deploy it, but now you go back and you have our management, tell me about your pipeline. So you have Jira tickets, you have backlog, you have maybe an email you know, backlog that in a couple of weeks will be solved. So this is a real example of a US healthcare institution during 12 months of open roaming. So they got 1 million gigabytes of traffic, that's one petabyte, 3 million connections, 230,000 uh, 200, um, unique users going to the hospital in 12 months. And they increased the session time to two hours. You know, people is waiting in hospitals, so they want to get connected. More importantly, what the CIO says. The staff is no longer spending people spending time onboarding people. They are doing clinical work. They are helping the hospital to improve their processes. They don't have to do RF RFPs so often, right? Oh, I have a coverage problem. Let me see if I need new APs, if I need some seller flavor. And the burden on IT staff. So these guys, they can innovate. Maybe they are looking into how to optim optimize the network and not running after what they missed. But yeah, then the customers, as you can imagine, Wi-Fi stopped being noticed. They are giving great reviews to the hospital. And believe it or not, this is very important because people can have the best clinical service, but then people will still review them you know, in a bad way. So advancing, this is all perfect. But what about adoption, mapping? You know, chicken egg, is this a reality? So we launched these open roaming maps that you can consult. During this week, I was able to walk around Phoenix. And just a few blocks away, if you go to Safeways, yes, there are some supported networks out there. Um, not only that, but globally, this is really catching up. Japan, Tokyo, Osaka, it's virtually impossible to walk in the city and not get, get connected with public Wi-Fi outdoor. For us, this is impressive. Last week, London, they announced open rooming. The mayor went, went on social media saying, we are now delivering a huge benefit to our citizens. So, great news. At the same time, you know, the mantra says we don't want to be in the business without competition. We are happy to share with you guys that we are on a wide range of availability of equipment support. So, we started these plague fests around 18 months ago, and we have more than 20 vendors that are compliant with open roaming. So, that means even in this room, some of the people here worked with us and with the community. They have experts that they can guide you through how to do it. Sometimes it's a team you know, in Canada, in the US, in the Netherlands, but definitely we can really baseline the experience across the ecosystem. So we have networks, we have a problem that can be solved, we have equipment, what's missing? I personally believe we are missing you and your work and do a POC in your companies. Being on this event in Prague, I really believe working on standards for many years that your feedback and what you bring to us is very valuable for us not only to move faster, but make Wi-Fi better for everyone. So, you guys came here for a reason. You want practical stuff, you want to test, you want to play with things. We did a nice boot camp this week, I truly recommend it. If others want to include this on your training, I think we should all collaborate. But once you leave this event, how you can do a POC, an MVP, so that's what I want also to talk to you about, is the options. We already re referenced the vendors, they can help you. There's also hubs, integrators, IDPs, that they do the job for some customers, or they can help you. You can see a list, so how it presented from American Bandwidth, so Cisco, Global Reach, many of them, they have solutions. Then, option number B, that can also lead to option number A, is do it your own. Open source, we all love open source, right? If it's done correctly and if we can contribute. So we launched on GitHub a reference implementation both for a connector as an INP, meaning this venue connecting to the world, or for an IDP. If you want to have, I don't know, your family using Passpoint and connecting. This is all based on Linux, Docker containers, a mix of free radios, free certificates from Let's Encrypt, Symfony framework. Yeah, take a moment to just look into it. If you have questions, let us know. But that's really what we are about. To conclude, 
what I believe the message of this event is for you guys. You are having an experience here. If you go back home, you should have your company home lab, and you gain access to the bottom layer of IDPs that are trying to make Wi-Fi more seamless. Not only that, but on beta release is already open rooming for private seller. Yes, you have IoT, you have private seller. In the future, you can manage all this together. And not only that, we are working for Wi-Fi to have KOS. We believe that indoor densification is very important for 6G. So the work you are doing here today with great Wi-Fi 7, optimizing it, blending security, I believe mobile operators and the industry will use it in a much broader concept. We don't have enough time. Most of the topics here, we have a working group in the WBA with experts. I see many of you here on this room. Thanks for all you do. Thanks again for the invitation to be here. And I will just finish asking you to contact me for more information. Thank you so much.